Hey guys, Mac Kentucky Ranch Time, back with another episode of our 50 Beowulf Ballistic Gel Block Test Series. And today's episode, we are doing something a little bit different. So we are actually going to be loading this power belt, uh, 295 grain um, arrow tip bullet. Now, this is a little bit different and something that you don't really think about uh, taking a muzzle loader bullet and loading it in a brass case but uh, that's what we're going to do. So let's, uh, let's turn around here and take a look at the loading and a couple of little uh, caveats that go with loading this kind of bullet in a, in a brass case, and, uh, and then we'll head on out to the range. All right, so uh, once again, we have uh, my Winchester Large Pistol Magnum Primer Box uh, stunt double here uh, because I don't have that sleeve left for that box. Um, and then we have the power belt, uh, 50 cal arrow tip bullets. Now these say copper, but these are actually a copper coated lead bullet uh, with a really thick uh, copper coating on the outside. And of course, Hodgson little gun powder. Now, one of the things you might ask is <clears throat> how do you load a, a muzzle loader bullet, a skirted muzzle loader bullet into uh, a brass case. Well, that's pretty easy. You just take the skirt off and what's left is, uh, is actually a 50 caliber bullet. Looks a little odd, but you, uh, you insert that right in like you would anything else, bell that case and, and run that right in there to the depth you need and you're good to go. Now, one thing I do want to note, let's see if I can get this line back up here and zoom in. So there is not a lot of room down in the case. Let's get the camera up here where you can see this real good. So you can see there's only about maybe a, a heavy quarter of an inch of this bullet down in that case. Uh, I initially was trying to load a 250 gram bullet, uh, power belt bullet, and they would not load. There was only about an eighth of an inch of the bullet down in the case, and I didn't feel comfortable going with that small of amount of bullet, so uh, we went ahead and, and loaded up this 295 grain instead. So, all right, guys, let's head out to the range, and this thing actually performed pretty well, so let's go check it out. All right, guys, next up in our 50 Beowulf uh, ballistic gel block test is the, uh, the 295 grain power belt arrow tip. Now, this is uh, traditionally a 50 cal muzzleloader bullet with the skirt attached to it. And to load this in uh, 50 Beowulf, you just simply remove the plastic skirt. Um, 295, I actually had some 250 grain power belts as well, but there was not enough of a, of a flat before the old guy started on that bullet to get it seated in the case and have enough neck tension to hold it. Uh, wasn't confident in that one. so. Uh, I wanted to run the 250 grain just because it was so light and I wanted to push it pretty hard out of this bullet, uh, out of this 50 Beowulf, but I uh, just didn't feel comfortable uh, with uh, how little that bullet was seated into the case on that one. So this is the 295 grain. Uh, if you watch the 50 cal muzzleload test, um, this bullet pretty much disintegrated uh, with a three pellet load. So I'm, I'm kind of expecting similar results. Uh, and, and keep in mind, that's also at 30 feet. Uh, this bullet is not going to be so explosive at distance. So when this gets out to 100 yards, uh, out in those distances, uh, chances are it's going to mushroom up. It's going to stay together a little bit better. But anyway, 50, 30 feet is what we've got. And let's see what we get. All right, velocity on that shot was 1836.7, 2,200 foot-pounds, uh, 2,209 foot-pounds of energy. And let's go check out the catch. All right, guys, so I flipped these, gel these first two gel blocks. I flipped them around so that I had a fairly clean... 
uh, end down here to, to see wound tracks in. These vertical marks is where I pulled the other bullets out from the previous test. But this is our entry point for this round right here and uh, almost immediate expansion on this bullet. Uh, as you track down through here, there's lots of copper fragments, uh, copper and lead fragments all the way down through here. And eventually we get down here to about 20 and three quarter inches. And this is what's left of this bullet. Now, this, uh, I don't feel like this is all the bullet. It might be. Um, we'll get this out and weigh it here in a little bit. I think we're sitting there sideways. Actually, it looks like it's maybe flipped around backwards. It, it looks kind of funky, but just barely did penetrate uh, the outside skin of the gel block. So we weren't far from losing this one. All right, let's go back and run one more of these. All right, power belt, arrow tip, 295 grain. Pull out of 50 Beowulf, shot two. All right, velocity of that shot was 1854.2, brings our average to 1845.5 with standard deviation of 8.8, .8 and our kinetic energy at 2251.8 foot pounds. So that's a, that's a lot, of, lot of energy down there, guys. Let's go check out the catch on this one. All right, entry for this shot was right here and uh, another nice wound cavity out here running from uh, almost immediate expansion down to about eight or nine inches. And this thing settles down for some straight line movement here. And looks like we are laying out here, that is 22 inches of penetration. We got just a little farther out with this than what we did with the first one. All right, we'll get these dug out and have a closer look back at the shot. So here's the final results on these guys that I got them dug out. So if you notice, um, this big gouge right here is actually typical through both of these. This is where the polymer tip uh, came in, turned sideways uh, before it actually separated from the lead and left the bullet. And uh, you can see the, the, the tip sticking out here on the back where the skirt attaches into it, uh, it remains in the base of this bullet as well in both of these. So just a couple of oddities about this. Uh, one thing I do want to note, uh, this ballistic tip right here, the polymer tip, uh, it was going at like 2.8 grains. And this bullet, actually the bullet without the skirt, without the polymer tip weighs 295 grains. So uh, that's unusual. Most bullet companies will count the the weight of the tip into the total weight of the bullet and power belt does not. You have a 295 grain uh, copper and lead bullet here uh, and, and the skirt and the, uh, the polymer tip are extra weight actually. So, all right guys, really good performance out of this. We're looking at a 0.92 uh, expansion on this one. And I think the other one was 0.89 expansion. And, uh, you know, these things drove in pretty deep. We ended up with 21.4 uh, inches of penetration on the average between these two rounds right here. So uh, really, really good performance. Uh, other than the weight, similar similar to the, the performance we got out of, uh, well, you've not seen it yet probably, but the 500 grain uh, XTP that's coming up later. So, all right, guys, there it is, the, the Power Belt Arrow Tip Bullet. And... Uh, Really good performance out of this bullet. I was really, really pleased with the way it opened up and the penetration we had on this. And uh, I will note this, this this is not the most economical bullet to load for 50 bale wolf. Uh, <clears throat> these run about a buck and a half a piece. And uh, as opposed to uh, a lot of the other uh, solid coppers and, and other big hollow point bullets uh, from Hornady that, that run in that in that buck neighborhood, uh, or just over that for the coppers. So, uh, but in a pinch, these will work. And, uh, you know, any, any of the skirted 50 cows are going to work. Now, if, they, if it's a 50 cow, 
uh, with a Sabo, with a 50 cal Sabo, those will not work because those are usually a 45 or 44 caliber bullet with a skirt to make up the difference for the 50 uh, diameter. So it needs to be a skirted 50 caliber skirted bullet because it's actually a 50 caliber. Uh, and actually what tipped me off to this was uh, the original set of reloading dies I had for 50 Beowulf. <clears throat> Let me grab these here. These are uh, almost uh, an antique now at this point. So this was a set of, of dies that Alexander Arms originally um, reached out to, or to, to Lee to make as a, as a custom die. <clears throat> and, and when these first come out, uh, Alexander Arms actually included a load sheet with these dies, 450 Beowulf. And uh, I may try to snap a picture of this and actually attach it uh, to one of these videos here. But on this bullet, or on this on this load sheet, they list a, uh, a power belt 420 grain bullet uh, over here on this side. And on the flip side, they've got a 530 grain bullet, a 348 grain bullet, and I think that's it. They've got Barn, Sierra, Hornady, Spear, Hawk, uh, and Al Alexander Arms actually has a couple of proprietary bullets too that are also listed on here. So some pretty neat load data on here. They've got uh, uh, powder charges and charge weight. They don't have mins and max. So they're calling in primers, OALs, powders, and charge weights. And uh, so pretty neat information to have uh, right directly from Alexander Arms. So seeing those power belt bullets listed in there the first couple of times and i and i've had these for several years it, it didn't really register what those were until uh, i started shooting more muzzle loader and then i realized that hey these are actually muzzle loader bullets so uh that was pretty neat the uh price on these is 29.95 so 30 bucks on that and uh, that's for a four die set too. And that actually comes with the crimp die and everything. So that was a four die set for 30 bucks. That die set's probably from back in the in the late nineties or early 2000s. So uh, anyway, pretty neat to have that die set. Uh, let's get into some numbers here. Uh, velocity on this power belt, 295 grain bullet. Uh, over a two shot average was 1,845.5 foot per second. Standard deviation was 8.8. .8. That's pretty good SD for a, for a big bullet like this. Uh, energy was 2,231 foot-pounds at the muzzle. Uh, expansion was averaged 81%. Uh, retained weight averaged 90%. And penetration averaged 21.4%. So some pretty good numbers out of this bullet. Now, like I said, these are going to run 30 to 40 cents more uh, than, than buying other 50 cal projectiles because you're paying for the skirt, you're paying for the fancy packaging and, and all that stuff. But uh, so not the most economical way to go at this, but it definitely would work in a pinch and actually would work very well. So, all right, guys, if you haven't already, please hit that like and subscribe button. There's an information tab right up here, uh, as mentioned before, that goes to my website with my affiliate partner links. And if you shop any of those affiliate partners, um, that could actually help support the page, and I would appreciate that. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments. And Matt from Kentucky Range Time, we'll catch you on the next one.